as always, I'm not sure if I'm the best example uh, to follow for a tutorial, but at the same time, see an average Joe install this. So in today's video, we're taking the old brakes off and putting the new ones on. Uh, this is the brake kit from Willwood uh, 140 20 which is the 14 inch rotor, six piston super light caliper, and it's also got the uh, spindle, the pro drop spindle from my Mustang 2 suspension. So go ahead and get after it. I will uh, try to make this, you know, step by step. First thing to do is to assemble the spindle. Here is the, the little attachment for the steering. Luckily, when they designed this, they, uh, they made this to where you can flip it around. This box, I believe, is a hub. Super nice. Looks, looks to be made of. Uh, billet Take a look very closely. You can see all the machine marks And I shaped it very nice thing uh, This little piece is a nice screw on cap. I love that It you don't have to go beating on the other ones, right? Because the other ones you have to tap on with like a hammer or a wrench They always get dented. They look ugly So we need to basically get this guy Put onto here. Not gonna need these guys. These hold your caliper to the hub. Or, I'm sorry, the, the the rotor to the hub because they go into these little small holes there. This is, I believe, our uh, outer bearing, and there's the inner bearing, the the seal. The seal goes here after you grease them. And then, of course, they have our seal studs. This is uh, to assemble the two-piece rotors. And then here's your very familiar, uh, basically the lock nut for the hub on the spindle. It's a little protective deal. So, uh, not gonna thread and mess them up. But first, we need to put the inner bearing on. Gonna use some red line. Okay. Boom. Get it all greased up. Yes. Now we've got a nice greasy bearing. Okay, take my seal. Gotta go there. Got a little ball peen hammer. Get this tapped on. I used something like this. It's wood, it's soft. So Got that, uh, got that seated. Cool. I'm gonna take this because uh, we need to go ahead and start the inside. Okay, so we're just gonna get this started. Go ahead and send them home. The best way I know to torque these throw these in here. This guy goes in, goes on here, little keyway. You got a nib. Pretty sure there's a side for it. Yep. 
So then we got this guy. Little castle nut. Kind of prevents it from going anywhere. And then you basically do your little curly cue on it. You can throw your cat back on. Bada bing, bada boom. So I get the steering knuckle out. It's called a steering knuckle. That's what I call it. Steering connects to. <laughs> Um, so this being the driver side, actually, this will be oriented this way. So we will need uh, this little kit, little harbor kit. Uh, this this guy out. This is your uh, basically spindle caliper bracket. There's a little harbor kit. Okay, so so depending on what size rotor you got from Woolwood, you're gonna need you're gonna get. Uh, an individualized kind of uh, spacer that spaces this out correctly and then these are your shims for the caliper and the uh, caliper bracket and then these bolt your um, caliper to this so. All right. also you need red loctite we're going to show you the difference in the shims that you get because there's there's actually two different kinds here Here's two different kinds right here. So uh, these guys are uh, smaller in diameter, but they're thicker. These guys are larger in diameter and they're thinner. And you can see that in the camera. Right. So the thinner ones are 0.16. Thicker ones are a uh, 0.035. Per the diagram, Per your diagram, uh, we're gonna read together. Uh, so, no, you know, item number two that goes onto the caliper bracket. And we'll go to the BOM. Number two is the 0.016 thickness shim. We also need this hardware. The way this orients, your caliper goes to the rear, and your steering goes to the front. Now, I'm talking about a Mustang 2 style suspension. Go through. There we go. And then now, just start the threads. Next thing, we'll go ahead and put this to the side. We're going to put up the uh, rotor and the rotor hat so that we can put these guys on and... all right Now for the fun part, which is these uh, safety wiring. Oh boy. Yeah. I am not super static, but uh, for the most part, it's not that difficult. Very simple process. Very simple concept where you take wire that goes through two bolts. And so you're preventing. So if this guy starts loosening, it's actually pulling and tightening on this guy and vice versa. And you basically do two bolts at a time all the way around and that way it ensures that when you are uh, definitely pushing the limits of this thing that uh, these bolts don't come undone and you know you just lose uh, the connection between rotor and rotor hat and the, the wheels and be, you know prevent you from stop or uh, something further catastrophic you know damage my typical regular pliers to do this <clears throat> so I'm gonna get this guy feed through and I will say this the more you bend this wire the harder it is to get through the hole there we go one one feed one pulls down and through uh, time to do the twisties to really secure this thing onto the bolt. And then 
cut the excess. Safety tie wired. All right, uh, rotor is assembled, safety wired. The hub is all assembled with the bracket and everything tightened down, bolted up, lugs, all that good stuff. Um, do not put away your 016 shims because we may need them in case, for some odd reason, your caliper is not lining up. Now, for my kit, I used uh, all four of these shims, which are for adjusting in the other direction of the caliper. And then we have the hardware. So here is your spacer, which goes to your specific rotor size and that uh, caliper bracket base. So they, they go right here for, for the caliper that you have. Um, then you've got the washer and nut here that holds copper on. And then you have the uh, set washer, or set, set screw for the rotor. Now, here comes the fun part. Time to remove the old spindle. Now, all I gotta do, um, I have somebody who already said they're interested in the spindle, rotor, caliper, the whole nine yards. So I just need to disconnect the um, brake line and then yeah we're got I need my yeah. I'm gonna need this to uh, you know bang it off the uh, the the you know ball joints go through the spindle because you, you know it's uh it's gonna be a problem I don't know if you guys have noticed yet in the video but I am in fact wearing gym shorts my leisure wear and I am in fact wearing off-brand great value Crocs. Um, so if anyone has a problem, you can, you know, pound sand and go, you know, fight a brick wall somewhere. Oh, yeah. oh. Just like the other. So we've got our, but yeah. So here's a problem that I was running on the other side, this side too. Uh, I've got some interference with my anti sway bar with the steering knuckle. So it's. <laughs> take our spacers definitely need to have our pads in here going on to the car uh, see if I get the strength there we go so run that off pull that off and this pops off just gotta go boom and then Boom. And then, there we go. 
And then you take your little bar, snap it back in place. Bada bing, bada boom. Like I mentioned before, you need these spacers. These are the 035 spacers. I'm going to use two of them for each bolt. There's two there, four total. Two right there. And then easy enough, this just goes right on these studs. Bolt these guys down, so washer. It looks like it has even spacing. And there's just the ever so slight drag of the of the pads onto the rotor, which that's okay. As long as it's even, right? It's not like I don't have one pad. I don't have one pad pressed onto the side of this thing. There we go. All right, well, this is gonna conclude the video. Um, for the most part, very straightforward uh, installation. The instructions are online at woolwood.com. Super clear, love the schematics, love how detailed uh, Woolwood is with, with all their diagrams and all their instructions. Um, now, Something we'll need to figure out is we're going to figure out this uh, this situation with the anti sway bar and the steering knuckle here, um, how they're contacting each other. Granted, the spindles I did have, they were the factory height spindles. So they cleared and I had to lower the car by a, by a good bit as you can see there's there's a lot even kind of cut so i can have a little bit extra room to, to go lower but that's where the final resting spot is but but basically what i need to do is i need to now that i have two inch drop spindles i need to at least maybe drop this by two inches as it's kind of the baseline start to for, for my adjustments and if that drops down that's going to drop the lower control arm which is what this guy is attached to and we may have that drop enough that it clears this little steering knuckle right here and there'll be no issue at all but uh, I think we're gonna save that for another video and uh, kind of keep uh, pushing through progress so that I can get the whole front end of this car kind of put back together all right so just to give you guys a preview of the next step, we're going to install the pedal assembly, the proportioning valve, the Wilwood master cylinder, and the modern driveline hydraulic clutch setup so that um, I can have a hydraulic clutch that works with the factory OEM style uh, pedal assembly.